Welcome to the Custom Textures Creation Tutorial Episode 104, brought to you by ModsOnline.com. In this episode, I'm going to walk you through the creation of a, a texture with an embedded normal map. Now, a normal map is a way to project geometry or polys onto a brush or model that don't really exist. This is extremely useful uh, in keeping your try count down in your maps if you want to uh, add little details to your map or make it look like it has really got depth, your textures really got depth when in, in fact it's just uh, a plain texture. Uh, also if you're modeling you can project a normal mapped texture over your model, over your low poly model making it look like it is a high poly model. What I've done is I've gone in and I've created a 64 by 64 floor tile. Uh, this is comprised of seven brushes. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. These brushes each have five faces that are going to get rendered. The top and then one, two, three, four sides. So we have five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, and then this is just going to be the top face here. So 31 faces per floor tile that need to get rendered. This is going to add up in the engine as each square gets broken into two try. In this instance, it, because, my, because the geometry is perfect squares, each square will get broken up into two triangles. Now these triangles each get rendered, that is how your game engine builds the geometry. So each of these triangles gets rendered. Now we're looking at 31 faces that need to get drawn per floor tile, which makes out 62 try. Uh, I'm just going to delete this one and I've actually created a gray texture and, and uh, brought it in uh, converted in the asset manager and textured the visible surfaces here. So I've textured those 31 faces on this floor tile and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and create a dance floor type situation uh, with with these floor tiles just to show you what um, show you what I'm getting at here. Eight floor tiles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And like that. And then rather than copying and copying and copying, I'm just going to select inside again and duplicate that. So now we've got a large dance floor texture. Well, this is our, our floor that we're going to create. And uh, we're just going to save this as a textures map. Yes, it exists. Uh, I've, for my testing, I created a uh, textures map uh, GSC, MP Textures GSC, so I don't need to go in and recreate it afterwards. So what we have got here is we've got now got our high poly, we'll call it, but this is the high try count section of our map. And I'm just going to close this out now, and I'm going to open up Photoshop with a height map that I've created to simulate the, the uh, floor tile that I actually created out of geometry. So I've taken the look of that high geometry brush, high tri count brush, and replicated that into a grayscale image for a height map. Now the way that this works is a height map operates in grayscale, and the darker the color in grayscale, the lower it is uh, three dimensionally. So black is going to be as far down on the brush as you can get all the way up the grayscale spectrum to white which is going to be the highest it can get. So 
Um, I should also mention that I've gone to the NVIDIA.com website and downloaded the Adobe Photoshop Normal Map and DDS authoring plugin from NVIDIA and I've installed it. Uh, if you Google NVIDIA tools, uh, I'm pretty sure it's the first result that you get and just download that Normal Map and DDS authoring plugin for Adobe Photoshop and away you go. So that said, I've got my image is 128 by 128 pixels. I've got a very high resolution to give me some sharper edges. You can make it as high resolution as you want or as low resolution as you want. Keep in mind that it does take up some system resources the more uh, in-depth your texture is. It takes up far less resources to uh, create a texture on your brush than it does to actually texture every individual brush. So that said, I'm now going to go to my filters and I have NVIDIA tools listed and a normal map filter. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on that and it's going to give me a little preview here of what my normal map is going to look like. Some of the settings that you want to pay attention to, we want to add height to our normal map. Uh, if we're creating a tileable texture, we want to make sure that we've got the wrap checked. Uh, if you look at your 3D preview, your dynamic preview, and it looks like it's going the wrong way, it looks like rather than the black being lowest and the white being highest, it looks like it's going the wrong way, you need to invert your X and your Y. The sample, we want a 5x5 five five sample. And the scale is how high up it is going to lift each of these dimples. I believe the default is 1. Uh, you can see it's uh, definitely brought it down there. I'm going to keep it at, or I'm going to put mine at 5 just for, for in this uh, example so that you can definitely see the, the, the difference, the boldness. Uh, it also allows you to do a 3D preview of this normal map. And you can see with the animated light that it's, this flat texture is casting shadows along the edges along the edges and that's what we're looking for. So that said we're now going to create our normal map and boom done. Now what we need to do with our normal map is we need to save this as a Targa file. So we're going to go to our Call of Duty 2 main images folder and we're going to create get out of there we're going to save this as a target file, so I better select that first so I don't forget. But another thing that we want to make sure that we've got under in here is underscore NM. That tells us that it's a normal map. Okay, So the, my name and my texture is height map underscore NM for normal map and it's at a target file. We want to save that as a 32 bits per pixel and Boom, done. That's all we need to do in here. So we're going to close this Photoshop out now, and we're going to open our Asset Manager. And we're going to now create our uh, actual texture with the normal map embedded in it. So I'm going to open up my game data file. Uh, this is my plain gray texture that I've created. And I'm going to copy that entry and I'm going to make it plain gray underscore normal map. And so now I have an extra. And I'm going to add, uh, going to add my normal map as the one that we've created. Height map underscore NM. Okay. A couple things that you want to pay attention to here. Make sure that you have selected a surface type. Make sure, make sure that you have selected a usage so that it knows where to find it in the editor. Um, again, I've got my locale set up as uh, a personal one, so I know where to find the textures or the assets that I create. And uh, that's it. So we're going to save our entry, and we're going to convert it. And it's done, just like that. So now we're going to go back into the map editor, and we're going to look at our difference in tri-count and difference in textures. And 
the thing that you're going to be kind of probably a little bit unsure about here is what it's going to look like in the editor. Uh, the editor will not render the normal mapping. So what we need to do is we're going to take our caulk and we're going to draw out a brush that is the same size as the dance floor that we created on the other one. And we're going to make it so the floor is level, which it is now. And we're just going to place it next to it. Actually, I'm going to create a wall between the two of them. So, here we have, on this side, we have our uh, multi tri or our hard, high tri count brush. Over here, this single brush is going to render two tri, right? Because it's going to get divided right down the middle and it's going to have one triangle, two triangles. This one, we figured, very high tri count, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to select um, the Strider locale, which is where I've put it, and we have our plain gray, which I've textured these ones with, and our plain gray underscore NM, which is our normal map. So I'm going to texture the top of this with that, and it doesn't look anything like it's got geometry, does it? It's very flat. Look down here. This one has geometry. This one does not. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, oops, I'm going to grab the tools textures again. And I'm going to do a little bit more mapping just so that I can be happy with uh, what we're going to have on our output. And select that. And we're just going to create some height to this wall. Okay. That should be good enough. That's actually really high. Let's lower that down to about there. Okay. And we're going to texture our visible faces of this with a... Oh, I should fill this hole in as well. So we need to draw a brush right there. Don't need that one tall. This one we'll just texture with plain gray. Okay. And we need something that's going to cover everything. Basically what I'm doing right here is I'm creating a skybox. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the way Foilman created his skybox in his tutorial. And uh, for that reason, you're not going to see me creating a box and hollowing it. So, uh, alright. Duplicated that, and then I'm just going to raise that up, and then raise that up. You should always make your skybox out of individual brushes. You don't need to uh, make it elaborate, but you need to take the time. Mapping does take time, and there is no shortcuts that'll make it uh, simple and easy and if you want quality, it takes time. If you want to rush it, then you know you're always going to have a flaw in, of some sort in your map, and uh, that's not what you're trying to accomplish by mapping by any sort of means. Now that didn't take all that long, did it? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select my faces that are visible and I'm going to throw a brick texture on them I 
think. Okay. Uh, let's find ourselves a brick texture. Exterior walls, probably. And locale of all. And find ourselves. Oh, look at that right there. Nice brick texture. Okay. Now, what else are we missing to be able to play this map? I guess we're going to need a uh, multiplayer spawn. So we'll go MPDM spawn. Place that here. Bring that up out of the geometry. Make sure it's not touching anything or embedded in any geometry. And I guess a light. We should add a light. And N for the entity editor. Give this a radius of 600. Covers our entire map nicely. Uh, pick that up out of the floor. Uh, press N. Leave this selected. Press N to get rid of the entity editor. Press K to bring up the color selector. And we can give our light any color we want. I think we'll go with the Let's go with a red shaded light here. And something like that. And what else? Oh, I know. When I created my texture, I made it 128 by 128 for detail purposes. Now, when we created our floor tiles, I created them at 64 by 64. So I need to check that my I need to check that the repetition of my uh, texture is in the same pattern as as what's here, which will repeat my texture every 64. So I do that. I select the the face, bring up my surface inspector, and it's set to repeat every 32 right now. So I need to repeat that. I need to double it. So to five, to five. And boom, there we are, we're repeating every 64. So now my textures, my, my texture should match my geometry size-wise. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And bring up our compiler. And MP textures, we're just going to go ahead and compile it. Um, I've noticed there's been a fair number of questions in the forums regarding the rainbow colored models. Uh, this is due to the light grid. Uh, take a look at the VC log tutorials for Call of Duty 1 if you don't understand it. Uh, I'm not going to cover it in this tutorial, but basically that will get rid of your rainbow colors is by building a grid and embedding it in your map. So, there we go. Now we're going to run our selected map. Okay, and here we go. And pick a team, pick a weapon, and we're into our map. You see, this is the side where we've got our high try count. And we'll walk over to the other side where we have our low try count. Now, my FPS is taking a pretty severe beating because I'm running the recording program, but uh, you can see there's not really that much of a difference between the two. Um, but where we're going to notice the difference is when we bring down our console and we type CG underscore draw FPS 1 our console away. See that on the side that we're running the low try count is jumping between uh, jumping all over the place here. Looks like 75, 25, 28, 41. Okay. And then when we go to the high try side Nineteen, sixteen, thirteen, 
so you get the point. But they're both the same. Metal on this side, metal. So that's it. Enjoy.